Today I'm going to be showing you how I create my signature floating flowers. Um, they kind of look like they're floating on top of the fabric, which is why I call them that. So I'm showing you a couple of examples of other hoops that I've done. Both of these patterns are available in my shop at thethreadhoney.com, which I'll link below. But you can see the different kind of uses of these flowers. Um, I've used different colors for the insides of the flowers in this hoop. To create this just one flower that I'm doing today, I'm actually using this pattern from my shop. It's called the Flower Power Pattern. And I just outlined one of the flowers onto this blue broadcloth fabric. And that's what I'm gonna be using today to show you how I create um, this design. All right, so I'm starting from the back of the hoop. I have my threaded needle with the knot at one end. And I'm going to pull it to the front, starting at just one uh, petal of the pattern. And what you're doing is kind of a hybrid of doing a satin stitch or just a like long one-off stitch, if that makes sense. So you want your threads to touch um, as you're creating the petals. And in a traditional satin stitch, you would, like right now, pull the needle through and then start back at that same side. So what I'm doing right here is a traditional satin stitch, which is um, kind of the goal of going about this. But you'll find as you go, because of the shapes of the petals, it's sometimes easier just to start a brand new stitch, um, which is what I'm doing right here. So instead of starting right now at the interior, I'm going back out to the exterior of the petals and just pulling it through. And where satin stitches, you don't want them to overlap at all. Because you're creating a circle shape, it's hard to create um, the petals without slightly overlapping uh, in the interior of your petals, if that makes sense. So, of course, you don't want to completely overlap your previous stitch every single time. Occasionally, you will. And that's okay as long as your thread isn't getting like too bulky or um, I guess just bulky is the right word. So I'm continue, continuing to go around. Um, you can see right there, there's a little bit of a gap, which we want to avoid. So I'm going to pull it out and redo it. If you want to, um, you could just create another stitch in the middle of the gap. But when you're doing it um, at this stage, I find it's easier just to pull it out and kind of do it the right way and redo that stitch. I'm using three strands of white DMC embroidery floss to create the petals, which I think gives off the right texture for this um, scale of flower. You want to make sure as you're going around that you're keeping your thread really smooth. Um, so if you're a fan of um, embroidery floss wax, this would be a good place to use it. Um, but if not, just always kind of run the strand of embroidery floss through your fingers before threading your needle. And that will help to make the um, embroidery floss stay straight and not all twisted up. While shooting this video, I was using my wooden craft stand, and if you're interested in learning more about that, um, I can film a video kind of explaining what it is when I use it. I don't actually use my craft stand all of the time, uh, mainly because I find that it's uncomfortable on my back. I prefer to be um, kind of like sitting down, laying down on a couch when I stitch, but if you're interested, just leave me a comment below and I can film a video about that.
Now that I'm done with the petals of my flower, I'm gonna go in and fill the center of the flower. So I have three strands of DMC 3852 embroidery floss, and I'm gonna create French knots around the perimeter of that inside of the flower. As I go along, I'm wrapping the thread around my needle twice and then pulling through. I'll go all around this um, and kind of create a outline and then go in and fill. With the outline complete, I'm now gonna go in and fill the rest of that center, again, using French knots. When I fill in the center of it, I will wrap the thread around my needle twice, and sometimes I'll just throw it around three times, just so it doesn't look so uniform. Um, in nature, things are less uh, perfect, so I feel like that's a good way to um, Bring that in and you want to make sure that you're filling all of the blue so that when you're done you don't see the fabric at all behind your stitches so that's it i hope that it helped you understand how i create these flowers again you can shop my patterns at thethreadhoney.com which i'll link below you can leave me any comments and i'll try to get back to you if not you can find me on instagram at threadhoney